various substances are normally present in the human body and many of them required for life and characterized by low toxicity. I call them orthomolecular substances. And uh, I thought, uh, here we have what the Food and Nutrition Board uh, does, estimating the amount, the intake needed to keep you from dying. And that's the RDA. Uh, <laughs> but you can also ask a question, what is the intake that will put you in the best of health, be most effective against disease? And when I looked through the medical nutritional literature to find out what this intake was, I found there was nothing in the literature about it. Practically nothing, just a few papers had been written on this subject. And, well, how do you find out? It's a little hard. When people ask me, I say, if you still catch colds, you're not taking enough vitamin C. That's one way of finding out. Uh, it's interesting that uh, for most vitamins, uh, all animals require the substances exogenously. Uh, with little doubt, what happened was 600 million years ago, uh, primitive uh, animal uh, was running around eating plants, his ancestors, these plants, and his biochemistry was very much like theirs. Here he was able to synthesize thiamine and riboflavin and pyridoxine and vitamin A, and, uh, but he was eating the plants which synthesized them and he was getting enough in his foods so that he really didn't need this apparatus and he lost it. And ever since then, all animals have required these various vitamins. This didn't happen with vitamin C. And why not? Presumably because there isn't enough vitamin C in the foods. And one reason that animals require more vitamin C than plants is that animals have collagen as their principal macromolecular molecule, a structural molecule. And uh, plants use uh, carbohydrate, uh, polysaccharide, cellulose. So human beings can't synthesize collagen without using up vitamin C. They need more vitamin C than animals do, so they've kept on synthesizing it. Unfortunately, the common ancestor of all of the primates some 25 million years ago was living in a tropical valley where the food was so high in vitamin C that when a mutant came along who had lost the ability to make the enzyme that would produce the vitamin C, uh, he had an advantage over the wild type, and the wild type died out, and since then all of the primates have had to get vitamin C exogenously. Most of them have had sense enough to stay in the tropics eating the foods that are high in vitamin C, but man has moved out into uh, temperate and subarctic areas and has changed his eating habits in such a way that practically all human beings are suffering from uh, a sort of subclinical scurvy that is called ordinary good health, but should be called ordinary <laughs> poor health. So we can ask, uh, how much vitamin C do these animals manufacture? It's proportional to body weight. Uh, 70 kilograms of house flies manufacture 10 grams of vitamin C per day. And uh, in general, animals manufacture about 10 grams per day. Uh, it says here 2 to 20 grams per day per 70 kilogram body weight. That's 40 to 400 times RDA for humans. I might as well mention now uh, that I take 300 times RDA, 18 grams of vitamin C per day, and 80 times RDA of vitamin E, and 25 times RDA of the B vitamins. Perhaps when I start getting old, I'll go up to 50 <laughs> times. And, uh, Ten times, ten times RDA of vitamin A. It's interesting that the recommended amount of vitamin C for monkeys is 70 times that for human beings. Easy to understand that, of course. Uh, monkeys are expensive. Probably a thousand dollars each. I don't know. Maybe two thousand dollars each. But we're still 
If you've been spending the last year implanting electrodes in their brains and writing down things in their research book and then come in and the monkeys have died, uh, uh, that's a real tragedy. You, you can't publish a paper, you probably won't get tenure. And <laughs> so uh, they've worked very hard to find out what the optimum intake of vitamin C is for monkeys.